Welcome to week three. Um, we I recently saw on the parent surveys that some of you maybe would like a video tutorial on your week's classwork, so we're gonna try it. Um, your assignments this week include creating your own schedule for your homeschooling, uh, cleaning your instruments, the staccato math, and practicing with recordings. The two that we're going to cover first are cleaning your instrument and scheduling. As far as the schedule goes, it's mostly there to help you um, organize your thoughts and kind of give you a goal to finish for the end of the day. I don't know about you guys, but when this all first started, I freaked out. I had to create enough work for an entire week within a day. And I had to do that for, I have eight classes. So you can kind of imagine like the first day was awful and I worked for 12 hours straight. You guys should not be doing that. Please, if you are having more than 20 minutes a day, that's 100 minutes a week for any class, please notify your teacher. This is all new to us and we're trying to figure out like about what 20 minutes of work at home looks like. And we don't get to see that, especially for those of us that maybe don't have kids in school. It's, it's interesting and we need your feedback so we can adjust. So I gave you an example of my schedule, which looks kind of like on Mondays, I try to grade everything and Mondays kind of suck for me, but they work. And then after lunch, and I, I schedule in my meals because if I don't, I know that I'm not going to eat that day. So if that's something that helps you, great. Um, and there's no right or wrong way to do this. You can do like Monday is all science. Tuesday is all English. Or you can do where, like what I have, which is um, for this chunk of time, I'm going to do this task. For this chunk of time, I'm going to do this task. And some of you have already turned it in and that's great and they look awesome. If you are uncomfortable sharing your personal schedule, don't feel like you have to. You can have a parent just kind of email, text, send, whatever that, yeah, it's done. I don't, I, yeah. Oh, or you can write like a couple sentences on, did this help you or did it not? Why? Uh, I mean, we're going to be as flexible as we can. I know your time and your stuff is, some of that's private and that's totally fine. The cleaning your instrument thing. This one is huge. I got this from the Weezer band director and some of your instruments you can probably attest are not in the greatest of shapes and the way that we keep them in shape is through proper, proper cleaning and maintenance. Please, please, please watch the videos that were posted online. If you don't have access to YouTube, email me, text me, call me, whatever, and I will try to get you a detailed list and maybe pictures of what you should be doing. Um, but we want to do a deep clean. So not just your typical, like running your silk cloth through your woodwind instrument or cleaning off and sanitizing your mouthpiece, uh, for brass or I don't know, dusting off your percussion equipment. It, there needs to be some form of sanitizing here. Um, ultimately because we're, we're in a time where we kind of just need to clean. <laughs> um, and if you have questions, like I had a student recently ask me like, Hey, I only have a piano at home and there's no piano video. The instructions I gave him are on his own personal thing. And I am more likely to respond to comments if they are on a particular assignment. I don't know why 
the Google Classroom doesn't inform me when you guys make comments on the stream, but it just doesn't. Um, the other thing is make sure when you are doing your cleaning thing that you are doing a before and an after shot. This shows me, one, that you've actually done something and there might be a, a change in your instrument. And two, it can at least kind of give an idea of like, yes, I started it, and yes, I finished it. Um, the other things for this week. Practicing with recordings. This is huge. Um, you guys remember from class, like, when we would play together, sometimes, and I'm just going to spitball here, sometimes the... Uh, saxes would rush, or the trumpets would play too loud, or the, I don't know, the flutes were playing one wrong note in measure, blah, 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 blah. Okay. It's harder to hear those things and to feel those things when you're just on your own. But if I do it with a recording, and this, I mean, goes for everything, like, when I even play with myself with recordings, it can make or break whatever you were doing. So separately, my two, so I play like a duet, the top part and the bottom part. The top part and the bottom part sound good on the, by themselves, but when I put the two together, I realized that they weren't lining up correctly. And the reason was because I was messing up a rhythmic thing in both sections at two different spots in the song. Um, if you can't find a recording, please let me know and I will try to either like make you a CD or, uh, make personalized recordings or we can do a video thing or whatever. I have all the scores and stuff here so I can try to help you out as best I can. Heck, we can even do rhythmic practicing over the telephone. Um... And last but not least for this week is your staccato math. So ultimately what you want to do is create what the note actually does to make a sound and what is rest. So the example I gave at the top of the worksheet was a dotted quarter note, which sounds like an eighth note with an eighth rest. The note will always be first because you start with the sound and the rest will follow. So for instance, number one is a dotted half note. So I know that I need to find what is half of a half note. And if you said quarter note, you're correct. So I would click on the quarter note, press control C, go over to the first blank, press control V, this means copy and paste. Control C, copy, Control V, paste. I don't know why, it's just how it works. Um, or if you're doing this at home, you can just draw these. Then, honestly, drawing is probably easier than what I'm trying to explain. So I know that a dotted half note is a quarter note plus, so if a quarter note is half of a half note, I need the equal rest value. Uh, which is a quarter rest, which I'm going to add to your worksheet because I forgot to. Uh, and the second section, we're pretty much doing the same thing, but instead of pictures, we're using numbers. So I know that a dotted half is going to have one beat of sound plus one beat of rest equaling two beats. So in the first section, I should only see pictures. In the second section, I should only see numbers. I really hope this helps. And if it doesn't, please let me know and we can try and help you in another way. Um, and give us feedback. There's a weekly survey at the end of every week. And if there's not, please let me know because I, apparently I dropped the ball somewhere. Um, and parents, I mean, don't, 
don't hesitate to call teachers if your students are struggling. Um, especially this class where there's sixth grade and I mean, we can, we can all think of a couple students, whether it was us or one of our friends or somebody in our classes that would just silently sit there and nod, even though internally they had no idea what was going on and were too afraid to ask. Um, and hopefully this whole situation, maybe that's what we get out of it is we're no longer afraid to ask questions and seek help. I don't know, but if, if you guys need any help, um, I know my office hours are tended to, but for real, I'm like glued to my phone like any person, <laughs> millennial in this time. So feel free to contact me through call, text, email, Google Classroom. All of these are hooked to my cell phone. So thanks and good luck on week three.